Hello everyone, my name is Lex, uh, back with a Monday evening stream, uh, continuing where I had started on Voice of Cards, Isle, the Isle Dragon Roars. Um, I think what I want to do actually... So we started with um, our characters, a bounty hunter, monster hunter, who has a friend who's a monster, how that works, who knows. Um, they had heard about a job to hunt a dragon that has resurfaced after many, many years of dormancy. Um, that seems to be maybe terrorizing the, the landscape not entirely sure on that one of specifically why um but essentially a job has been put out for adventurers to take down said dragon uh and my character has put together a team to do so uh we ran into the third member of our crew a witch named melanie um who seems to have some sort of personal uh, vendetta against this dragon. Um, but yeah, uh, our first task was really to figure out um, more about said dragon. So we end up going to a town called Thrysten uh, to meet up with a monster researcher. Uh, he said he'd give us some info if we uh, retrieved a treasure for him. Turns out it was a doll that used to belong to his daughter. Um, it was stolen by some monsters, so we had to track that down. We, we got it, brought it back to him. He was grateful. However, the news that he pretty much gave us is that we had to go to another town to learn more about said dragon. Uh, but this town... I uh, can't remember the actual name of it, but it seems to be one... Oh, it was like Unionville. Some weird at some very lame name. Um, but it is a town that is cohabited by both humans and monsters. So that could point us in the right direction. However, to get there, we have to go through the Bewildering Wood, which is what we'll be doing. But... I guess the uh, what you call it movie that played for chapter two, because that's where we are right now. It's chapter two. So yeah, chapter two, Brother Wood, which is where we will be heading now. Now that we play the, the movie. All right, and we're also level eight, which I think we're kind of above where we should be, but oh well. All right, so we've kind of traveled through all of this, kind of unlocked it. And then the wood is here.
and we have to navigate the bewildering wood um we also do have a item the woodland flute where we have to play this at a specific location in the wood and to see what happens and never seen nor heard from again, the Traveler intones gravely. They also tell of a certain tool one needs to get through this place. Oh, it's probably talking about the flute. Oh, can't go that way. Is that thing? Hmm. Let's burn it with fire. Finally examine the four stele found in the building wood. Okay, can't go through that. <laughs> nope, an event. Trees bearing very solid looking nuts whip to and fro in the force of the gale. This doesn't bode well for you. Roll a four or higher to avoid the danger. That's not a four. One of the nuts flies off a branch and smacks Mar right on the head. Poor Mar clutches the spot, eyes tearing up from the blow. Eight damage? God damn. Oh, uh... Hmm, I don't know what is good against this creature. Okay, ice doesn't seem to do much. Try this. Okay, it's weak against fire. Like, more than half the things I've fought so far have been weak to fire. Particularly special. You resolve to touch it anyhow. Okay, the remaining three.
Ooh, a chest. 500 gold. <laughs> he does sound like he's probably done putting up with the uh, player's bullshit. Like, this probably isn't the first campaign that he's had an asshole as a player. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, get on with it. That didn't seem to do as much. Oh, so evening YOLO. Mm. Hope all great. is well. Thunderstorm. Deal attack plus four bolt damage to all enemies. Okay, so this is her, her first AoE. Finally. Uh, mm, let's go send there. Damn. Either of those could have been good. Each character in your party can set up to four types of skills. Ah. Open the skill menu and select, uh, select set up, then skills to choose to set up skills for your party members to use in battle. Yeah. Alright, so... If she doesn't have any... I have to make sure that I always have... Um, whatchamacallit... Stones? I have to remember what these things are called. Um, gems. That's what they're called. So... If I get rid of, say, Magic Strike, that means there always has to be gems on the board for her to use. Otherwise, she really can't do anything. Um... I think I will swap them. Also, it does chew up a shit ton. We'll see how this goes. Beautiful melody flowing from the forest depths. It sounds like singing, or perhaps bird song. Um. Listen carefully. Who cares? Well, listen carefully. Your body is soothed by the gentle tone. It feels as though your fatigue has somehow washed away. Ooh. We all healed. Nice. Go. 
Don't hold back. I don't intend to. Fire. Hello. Uh, the next Stila is... You hear someone murmuring? It sounds like a man, but you can't really be sure in these words. Can't be sure with the outfit either. You fulfill the necessary requirements to unlock Woodlander's man's flip side story. Okay. Uh, we'll burn you first. Sapling Treant. Interesting. Don't hold back. Yeah, I would prefer most of these creatures to attack uh, my guy on the left so that he can actually heal after combat. Maybe if there's like a taunt ability, that'd be great. Another treasure chest. Hectorant. Add five to a target's defense for three turns. Huh. Okay. Just one shot him. And dead. Yep. Rolling claw. Deal one point five times damage. 
Oh, okay. You have found the Eastern Stila. You see the words Melody of Fortune chiseled into the corner. Finally examine the final two. Okay, yeah, we can't go that way. Or we can't cross over those... What are those? Trees, I guess? So, let's see... Oh, I didn't give him the ability. Fuck. Let's correct that. Uh, skills. Mar. Not too... I've never really done well with Body Slam. So honestly, I feel like I want to get rid of that. And we'll do Rolling Claw and see how this does. Oh no, nuts. Okay, that's the book of four. A bunch of nuts fly off from the trees, but you and your friends hightailed it out of there before any of them could hit you. Oh, hello. I need to hit the Stila every single time I want to go home. Ah, what a pain, the frowning woman sighs. Woodland Woodlander Woman's flip side story. Claw. Let's see how this does. God damn. Quality solve. Nice. That melody again. Let's try and find the singer this time. As if drawn in by the voice, you head deeper into the forest, where you find a woman playing a stringed instrument. Why won't the right words come to me, she laments, her fingers stopping on the strings. Hearing her sigh, you offer to help her with her song. Very well then. Please finish this verse, she responds, 
then begins to sing. In a snow-covered town, I hear a voice. How do you continue the song? <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Q. It's freaking cold. What the f... You shout the words in a loud voice. The woman's mouth hangs open wide. The words are so plain, perhaps overly so. Which is precisely why they pierce the heart, she says. Your cheap words somehow resonating with her. What the fuck? She entreats you to let her use your lyrics. Imagining the royalties, you happily agree. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. Huh, that actually panned out. found the western stela which you swear up and down was not here when you came in nevertheless you give it a smack you have found all four of the stela in the bewildering wood on a perhaps related note you hear a sound emanating from the east okay Oh, there's a treasure chest. Wednesday protects against wind. I mean, hmm. who doesn't have any equipment, uh, any accessories? My guy doesn't have any accessories. Uh, me as well. Oh, right, we should probably do a save real quick. Where the fuck did all these people come from? sucks to be him the woman appears to be lost how do I get out of here she asks with furrowed brows <laughs> nuts again that's not a four one of the nuts flies off the tree and smacks you right on the head the pain Brings tears to your eyes. them. I thought he was at least going to survive so I can do this. Oh well. Mm. Cars afflicted with poison take one to six points of damage at fixed intervals. Okay, that's good to know. Mm. 
Oh. You examine the stela. The message carved into the stela reads, Play in tune with the forest. You hold the woodland flute you received from the good doctor in Thryston. No. Do do lead. Do 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 do. You blow a handful of pleasant enough notes into the woodland flute. Someone had to record that line. You soon become aware of accompanying percussion, which reveals itself to be a series of impeccably timed footfalls racing toward you. <laughs> A young woman appears before you. That was absolutely dreadful, she whinges, her jaunty gait betraying her enjoyment. She calls herself Riddis and declares herself a woodlander, resident of the bewildering wood. Riddis? By sheer coincidence, the flute on which you played those notes was one designed to call the woodland people to your side. Stunned by your good fortune, you ask Riddus to lead you eastward out of the forest. What luck! She agrees far more readily than you ever anticipated. But, she continues, extending her hand, you'll have to hand over the woodland flute first. Uh, <laughs> make her buy it. <laughs> That'll cost you a thousand gold pieces, you say smugly. Hmm. You never miss a chance to earn some coin, do you? Nope. Ugh, it's always about money with you travelers, she snorts derisively. Her face contorts in disgust. She reaches into her cloak. Scrumptious looking piece of fur. Hey, what about my money? You stammer. Before you can finish your thought, Mars' tongue whips across your hand, snatching the fruit and sliding it into his gullet. Riddus gasps. How could you let him do that? Just one of those fruits sells for 10,000 gold pieces, she shouts. So you can pay me back for the fruit your little friend stole, or you can hand over that flute, she says, pressing her case. I think you've lost this one, Melanie says, snickering. You look down at Mar, who seems quite pleased with himself. I suppose I have, you sigh in resignation. You begrudgingly hand the woodland flute to Riddus. Riddus plucks the woodland flute out of your hands with glee and begins playing it as she skips away. Oh god, she's horrible. Well, playing is a generous term. It sounds as though she may as well be murdering the poor thing. Riddus makes it clear that the fastest way out of the woods is through Woodland, where she lives. It's that a way, Riddus says gleefully, pointing past the stela before you. Ah, so that's the exit. And possibly a path to Woodland has been hiding behind the cellar this whole time. Oh, nuts again? Come on. Well, that sucks. Nuts fly off the trees and smack you and your friends right on the head. Everyone's faces screw up in agony. And we all took damage. Great. How much... Where HP you look like? Uh... Okay. 
not the worst. I think we're about to get to a town, so... Maybe we can rest up there? Welcome to Woodland, British sense, gesturing out over the village. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm quite busy for the rest of the day. So you'll have to wait till tomorrow to leave the forest, she says, and makes her way home. Wait, what? Retire in the Woodland Inn once you have thoroughly explored Woodland. Oh, I actually can leave. Well, meh. Welcome to the forest oasis. The man greets you warmly. Been a while since we've had any outsiders, the innkeeper says, beckoning the party inside. It turns out this inn is simply a place where the poor, lost souls trapped in the bewildering wood may recover. You may stay as long as you like, free of charge. Oh, well, how generous of them. Um, however, we still need to explore. You happen upon a man greedily guzzling well water. Could it truly be that much better than ordinary water? Can't go there. The apothecary. Is there anything that I need? Don't think so. We have quite a bit of items, and I don't think we've really used any. Uh, there's the game power. Which we probably can do later. Uh, mercenary sword, where you have that. Ooh, ravagers. Magic staff, where you have knight's armor. Steel breastplate, already have. Dryad's garb, could use. Adventures of Tyre I have, and this stuff. Alright, so... First, let's do armor. There goes 600 gold. Alright, Ravagers. Give those to Mar. That's 400 gold. Uh, dry egg garb. Give that to Melanie. That's another 400. And I think... Ah, okay. I see now. The adventurer's attire gave better defense. The dryad's garb gave a boost. One point of boost to speed, though. I think I'll take that boost in speed. Uh, yeah. And then everything else is already the same. Uh, Sue Sands, we have like two of those at least. Destructo Box. Five wind damage uh, target takes for three turns. Mm. We'll pass.
you learn that Riddus' family is mired in debt and living hand to mouth. And I know how they got in so much trouble, the rumor mongerer says deliciously. We are not in the business of meddling in the personal affairs of others, Melanie says curtly, cutting her off. Apparently she's heard rumors of the dragon destroying another town somewhere. Our village would burn down so easily, she mutters, perhaps a bit more afraid of the symptom than the cause. This shortcut is reserved for use by woodland citizens only, the guard barks, clearly unwilling to let you pass. Boo. Fuck you, sir. Fine, we'll enter her house. Riddus pours over a book while practicing on the woodland flute. She remains dreadful at it. The instant you begin speaking, she nearly leaps out of her skin and hides the book. She somehow hadn't noticed you. I, I thought you were the debt collectors. You can't sneak up on me like that, she stammers, struggling to regain her composure. That's it. All the doors open. <coughs> Take note of a woman who appears quite ill. As it turns out, she is none other than Riddus's mother. <clears throat> she is in no small amount of pain. Will you give her something to ease her suffering? Wow, when you put it like that. Um... I only have one of these. I don't think giving her an oil pot is going to be helpful. I think I have at least three of these revives. Sure. The item you've proffered has no effect on her illness. Well, shit. But I appreciate the thought all the same, she says with a smile. Riddus's mother hands you mysterious card three as a token of her gratitude. All right, so what the fuck are these mysterious cards she begins for? Speaking of Riddus, who has been preparing the medicine that helps her get through the day. She blames her illness, and therefore herself, for making Riddus's life so difficult. The more she talks, the more her face drops. Ah, it's the same thing. Okay. All right, so we've pretty much done everything here. They won't let us leave, and there's really nowhere else to go. All right, guess we do the inn. Here to stay the night, the innkeeper asks, the moment you set foot in the inn. The wooden dining table practically groans under the weight of the platters upon it all brimming with meats and vegetables from the bewildering wood. I've certainly earned this, you say to yourself, as you slide into your seat at the table, positively drooling over the feast before you. Melanie takes no note of your boorish behavior, uttering a small prayer of thanksgiving before reaching for a plate of vegetables. Mar sits, Eyes fixed on the food upon the table, statuesque in his stillness. What a good boy. Mm. 
Mar clears the entire table in a matter of seconds, even emptying the water barrel in a single gulp. He lets out a self-satisfied burp that sends a small jet of just-drank water arcing out onto the floor. The sun sinks low, and the day draws to a close. You can even save us a drumstick? How rude. A scream pierces the silence. Fire! You leap out of bed, adrenaline coursing through your veins. The others follow suit, and before long you've burst through the front door and into the street. What the fuck? Riddus's house is ablaze, a nearby villager screams. What the fuck? My mother is still inside, Riddish shrieks, darting past you to fetch water from the well south of the village. Follow Riddish's... Is... I mean... Okay, they definitely don't want you to go through the burning house. Riddus is gathering water in an attempt to fight the blaze all on her own. Can you spare no one to help? Uh, let's say... Mars seems like a big strong boy. Melanie's got magic. Say Mar. Mar's eyes light up. He scrambles over the edge of the well and sucks the well dry in an instant. He pokes at his swollen belly and gestures toward Riddus's house, as if to say, Get me back there, quick. Quickly, put it out. You have to put it out, Riddus screams at Mar. Mar douses the house with the water he sucked up from the well. Mar uses hydro pump. It's super effective. Embers, and all is well. Or so you think. Something darts out from behind the house and attacks. What the hell? Habit Sans cards will trigger and each. Wait, what? Fight. Two fire dealt to all allies and enemies. Passion. Happenstances can sometimes occur during battle. You can see their effect with the triangle button. Well, hold on a second. Pyro Wolf. He restores 5 HP each turn. Well, aren't you a bastard? All right, how about some ice? Aha, you're weak to it. Perfect. Uh, we'll just do a ram. And let's Keep what gems we have for Melanie. Decrease fire damage dealt to all allies and enemies by two. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, we're going to do another freeze. Another six. Uh, this time I think he's going to do regenerate. And then you. Well, let's do a slash. Plus two defense to all allies. Okay. Blank filler. Alright. This should almost kill him. Ah, less than a five. Uh, we have regenerate on, so we're just gonna do rolling claw. Double proof. Decrease wind bolt damage by five. The fiery beast dispatched. You return to putting out the last of the blaze with Mars' help. Riddus's mother, now safe, tells you the creature came out of nowhere and set the house aflame. What would bring a creature of fire to a place like this, you wonder? Yeah, that was kind of random. Light breaks on a new day, and the commotion of the fire feels but a nightmare. You lead your party to Riddus' house to ask for safe passage out of the bewildering wood. Though spared from complete collapse, Grittus's home has been thoroughly scorched. Is the mother there? Yeah, it's still there. Grittus's mother tells you she was once deceived by a crooked merchant and plunged into debt. Grittus has been working to repay the debt ever since her mother took ill. You lightly press your thumb and forefinger to the corner of each eye, a mixture of sadness and anger swirling within you. Oh, that's her flip story. Riddus sits alone in one of its rooms, the air thick with the smell of char. There shouldn't be any fire creatures for miles, she grumbles. She says the monster appeared while she was playing the woodland flute last night. As to why any monsters, let alone fire monsters, appeared, well... Despite the circumstances, you ask Riddus to lead you out of the bewildering wood as promised. I did promise that, didn't I? She says wearily, rising from her seat. The poor girl is clearly still in shock. Why do you want to venture out beyond the bewildering wood anyway? She inquires, as she gathers this and that in preparation to leave. What reason will you give her? Uh, may as well tell her. We are in search of the dragon, you say valiantly, adding, the reward will be significant should we defeat him. Honesty is the best policy. Sounds like a real risky way to make a living, she replies flatly, 
feigning interest. A group of Ivory Order people came through here just the other day, she explains. Oh, God damn it! They already got her Connect first. The dots with malice. Those three, you seethe. At last, Riddus is ready to depart for the edge of the bewildering wood. Riddus joins her party. A maximum of three characters can participate in battles. Select party from the setup menu to form your battle party. Hmm. Who would I even change out? Melanie does a lot of damage. I mean, I guess I can swap out Mar, but like, why? Uh, I already did his skills. Oh, right. Um, abilities. Okay, so it was an ability. Decrease wind and bolt damage by five. You have Loose Arrow, which just does damage. Poison Arrow, deal dark damage and inflict poison if the roll is four or greater. And Quick Shot, deal twice the damage. Mm, may as well give you a shot, see what you like. Dryad's Bow, Dryad Garb. And accessories. We don't have any. Mm, I think we want to keep. So if she has speed, then I probably didn't need to remove this and probably just keep the adventurer's attire. So then I didn't need that dryad garb. <laughs> Depart from the eastern side of the uh, woodland and make your way through the building wood. Well, actually, hold on a second. Oh, nothing. This road takes you to the east side of the bewildering wood, but you'd be hard pressed to find your way without a woodlander's help, the guard warns. Well, it's a good thing we have one. Upon seeing that Riddus is with you, he steps aside and lets you through. Take that shortcut. The eastern portion of the woods certainly does not want for thick, soupy fog. You turn away, ready to lead the party deeper into the bewildering wood. Wait just a moment, you lot, calls the voice of an older man from somewhere behind you. Riddus appears to be familiar with him. She calls him Mr. O. Mr. O? 
Here you are, young lady, he says, handing her a slip of paper. Invoice for rental property damage and associated repairs. A million gold? What the fuck? Oh, dear. Further, Mr. O explains, Riddis did not have a fire insurance policy at the time of the conflagration, and so she shall have to pay in full. I'll thank you kindly to pay by the end of the month. Bye now, Mr. O says, receding from view as he returns to the forest. Ah, so he's an asshole. He, he. Riddis lets out a bemused chuckle, her demeanor remarkably calm for what has just transpired. She pulls the woodland flute from her cloak and begins softly playing. Uh. What the Riddis's fuck? ear-splitting performance, shall we say, draws monsters out from behind the trees. Within moments, they are nearly upon you. What the fuck? Actually, I wonder, does Mar still get experience if he's not in the active party? That's odd. I must have made a mistake, Riddis says, burying her face in her old book once more. Mm. She opens the book to a particular page and thrusts it in your face. You can't tell anyone in the village I let you see this, okay? It's a page of sheet music, with a note scrawled beside it that reads, Play this lucky tune to reverse your financial fortunes and make money woes a thing of the past. What the f- What kind of scam no bullshit is that? No I played this last night, our debt never went down, she fumes, incensed. You inspect the page a bit more carefully. Off in a corner, in letters so small as to be illegible, another message reads, May summon monsters if played incorrectly. You finally see that so long as Riddis holds the flute, this is nothing more than a monster conjuring melody. You snatch the woodland flute from her hands. You have mm. lost your flute playing privileges. You were <laughs> But I'll never escape from this mountain of debt without it, she cries, clearly still believing in the melody of fortune. Melanie quietly opines that while Riddus is many things, Bright is not one of them. Fuck. These slimes have swords? What bullshit is this? Armed slime. Ah, uh, sure. Why not?
Whoever decided to give slime swords and shields? Oh. Got back that elixir that we used earlier. Over your item limit, you'll need to discard one. What? So there's actually a, li a carrying limit? Boo. We'll get rid of these oil pots. Um... Wait, shit. Let's try and use some of these things. Well, I just circled around and there was nothing up there, too. Kind of lame. Okay, so he does get experience points. Nice. inside the grass and immediately find the owner of the voice it's a harpy oh that's not good it seems like the harpy hasn't yet noticed you you pick up a rock and throw it at the monster's feet wait what no Stop why it. the monster flaps its wings and flies away you find some coins scattered about where it stood oh hmm okay I guess that that passes.
another oil pot. Uh, all right, get rid of one of those again. Something. Ooh, nice. That actually oh. killed. overgrown boughs and shrubs aside as she does a hidden path out of the bewildering wood comes into view ah well we can do that but we haven't finished exploring so we're gonna do that Fuck those trees. <laughs> Harpy again. Got some money. Bombs are actually kind of useless now that I think about it. So let's just get rid of those from the inventory. I mean, they're probably going to be used for something at some point. Just, just you watch. Knight's chain mail. Breastplate of a famous cell sword. Uh, I think that's good for Mar. It is. Damn. Let's 
exactly enough. And dead. Oh, you're far behind. Everyone else is like level 10. Um, cornered prey. Add 3 damage if the target is afflicted by status ailment. Oh, add 3 2 damage. All right, guess we're leaving. Mm. At last, you are free of the bewildering wood. Praise the power of the woodlanders, you squeal in admiration of Riddis. She giggles bashfully. You've certainly kept your promise, you say. Thank you for showing us the way. I was hoping I could join you on your quest to defeat the dragon. Riddus suddenly blurts out. Turning it on the card ever so slightly may reveal what it contains. Why do you want to... Takes on an old book. No way I'm splitting the reward with you. Hmm. Why you want to get the dragon? She takes out her old book and thrusts another page in your face. This week's creature of fortune is the dragon. Boons may befall those who encounter him. Melanie's jaw goes slack. What is the deal with this book? Melanie asks, bewildered. I can probably pay off my debt if we can just defeat the dragon, Riddish chirps, revealing her true intentions. No, I won't dilute my share of the riches any further. No more additions to the party, you bark. Have you no heart? Are you just going to leave a young helpless girl like me to drown in an ocean of dead and deal with that crusty old man? Riddus fires back relentlessly. I wanna go. No! So goes the endless chorus of your thoroughly unproductive argument. Melanie calmly reminds you that the party, in its current form, stands little chance of defeating the dragon. See? You need me, Riddus says, sensing an opportunity. Your well-reasoned argument of no thwarted, you nod your head in resignation and welcome Riddus to the party. Dragon hunting party. Oh, I'm assuming that was the end of a chapter. Aha, it was. Chapter 3, Unionville. Head east to Unionville. Of course, I'm not going to immediately do that. Ooh. An 
Ogre, a Treant, and Umbral Goblin. Let's try and take out the Ogre, because they also do a lot of damage. Nice work. I kind of want to do damage to all of them. This will also kill the ogre, too. Oh. Okay, the treant resists lightning. Motherfucker, you heal? Alright, well, let's get rid of you then. Or not. Alright, fire. Sh this should kill? Maybe? Five defense? God damn. Alright, well, let's try and kill you. Or not. Let's try flame on you again. KO the allies can be revived during battle using a Spear Elixir. Uh, otherwise, it will revive with 1 HP when the battle is over. Okay, well, I think we'll actually use that. Oh, so they revive with like half HP. died anyway, so... Alright, so the girls are definitely hurting. Uh, let's use a salve on... Use a Melanie. Here's how poison works. Nah, it does work.
Alright, we're going to light you up. Point the heel, Rithis, which was a good thing because that was going to probably down her. Listen carefully so we can heal. Ooh, we all heal 10. Ain't got a thousand gold. Nice. Ooh, cave. Probably want to keep that in mind. All allies land critical attacks. Ooh. I like that. Wait, what are you? Aqua Rock. No, oh, but that didn't really do a lot. That was lucky. That was lucky. I keep saying that. She was lightning against this thing. Smacks you in the face as it blows past. You snatch it out of the air. It depicts a woman standing before a sunset. She smiles sweetly at you. Examining the background of the picture closely, you spot a lighthouse in the distance. Written on the other side of the paper is a single word. My darling dearest, I give you my love, my treasure, everything. The only word you need to see, really. Treasure. Certain mm. you'll come across of course, it in treasure. your travels, you stuff the picture into your pack for safekeeping. Okay, so we need to find a lighthouse. Oh, this is Unionville. Think 
gets one shotted. an ability? It is an ability. Three damage to a target if it's afflicted by a status ailment. Okay. favors the bold. It's burn. That was lucky. Alright, I think I'm going to put a heal on with this. Probably a good thing that I healed her. Oh, that's right. Status effects overwrite when you place them. Ready, aim, fire. Add 10 to own attack for two turns. Oh, damn. So she's now at four. A bizarre rock appeared. It seems primed to explode. Uh, what it becomes after it explodes? Is that good? Is that bad? A bizarre rock transformed into a fear rock. The only way out of this fight is through it. Oh, well that's not cool. Thank you. 
Uh, I mean, sure, let's use fire. Let's see what happens. And nothing. Good. Well, this is gonna die now. That's something. That was lucky. That was lucky, actually. Another snake eyes. Or, sorry, another one. Thunderstorm on all you guys. Aww. 
attack down is lower attack. That makes sense. I'm not going to do shit to it. Ooh, six. And it does nothing. Oh, shit. Gotta kill it, right? There we go. resist lightning. God damn, 15. too. That's good to know.
Uh, I think that kills. It does. Nice. Another crit heal. Excellent. That's a third crit here in a row he's done. Treasure. 1,200. Pretty good stack. Crit heal does 15. Another one? Wow. I think that kills it. It does, nice. You pick up a scrap of paper dropped by some manner of monster. It has a message scrawled on it in crude lettering. Uh, stolen treasure, harbor, uh, pen, harbor peninsula, where, sea, sea. I guess treasure and stolen peninsula peninsula harbor uh sea the sea yep yeah, we're the sea we're the sea sea the sea clearly whoever dropped you stashed the scrap of paper in your pack and resolved to keep an eye out for the treasure on your travels harbor peninsula
Oh. Don't hold back. Lucky. Mm, I don't think we need to deal with the goblin anymore because he's going to bleed out. Or poison out. Oh, is this like a dungeon? Oh, I probably shouldn't be here. If that's the case. Let's see. About the enemy. A harpy. Poison, so I don't really have to worry about it. That was lucky. Ow. But you're dead. Poison, deadly poison. So I'm assuming I can only have one skill equipped at one passive equipped at a time. Oh no. You can actually have more.
Uh, probably should heal myself. I think that would be prudent. work. Deal light damage to all enemies. Charge spell. Generate two gems. Ah. That kind of gets rid of the whole... I don't have gems issue. Kind of. But I think I may just not. Spinning Ray though.
big disc sitting on three hit points. Rough. Probably should heal uh, right. name. Dance. Provoke all enemies' attention until the next until the next action is taken. Oh, well he has the ability. That's a goblin. At your sudden proximity, a pair of eyes jerk up, startled to meet yours. They belong to a monster. It falls over in its shock, then scrambles up and flees in terror. Leaving behind some coins. Ah, it was nice enough to give me some money before it ran off. Look, you two, it's the sea, Riddus exclaims, frolicking in glee. 
You, on the other hand, trudge along as far as you can from the coast, ignoring the hair sticking to your forehead. You? Feeling something at your feet, you glance down. There's something underneath your boot. It appears you've stepped on a monster's cape, making it very upset. It attacks you in fury. What the fuck? Oh, and we are low on health too. Oh god, there's two of them. Three bolt damage to all allies and enemies. Weak to lightning. That's good to know. Quite a bit of damage. Another one. So we know that Unionville is down to the south. There's another town that seems to be down the end. That's fine. No, oh, fucking one shots him.
Well, Union Bill is where we were supposed to go. So, I guess we may as well. Um, let's kill these guys quickly. Ah, oh, I don't have enough thing to, to, uh, to attack them. Third time she's used that building, third time she's gotten a one. Approaching from up ahead. A monster, Melanie shouts, readying for battle. Mr. Flobby, get back here. It's dangerous out there, a young girl chides, taking the creature back to the village. It seems you've finally arrived at Unionville, a village where humans and monsters live together in peace. What a weird place, remarks Riddus lightheartedly. I like it. We aren't staying a moment longer than necessary, says an unsettled Melanie, her distaste for monsters plain on her face. Ask the denizens of Unionville what they know about the dragon. Any travelers with magical little critters can stay for free, the innkeeper informs you. It appears the headman's long-standing pronouncement on the welcoming of all magical creatures also applies to you and your party. Roll rest. Is there anything that you... Nope, same shit. Your path carry. Uh, I mean, quality salves, sure. We'll buy two of these. buy two of these. Alright, that's enough for that. Oh, 
What you got for armaments? Ooh, Mistral Blade. Uh, definitely taking that. Garbager, we have Thunderstaff. That's new. Yeah, sure. Air splitter. Knight's armor, where we got Knight's chainmail, we found Fairy Dress. We'll do fairy dress. But we'll do it for Melanie. Fire stay ring, wire stay ring, wind stay ring, lightning stay ring, poison stay ring. Um. Well, we have a ring of protection. I think an extra one. No, I think I'll get just give that to her. frowns deeply, claiming the cakes she bought for her beloved furball have all been eaten by someone else. Okay, useless. A quiet furball sits with crumbs around its mouth. The child says his monster friend left the village suddenly to go back home. He claims the headman told him that he could go home when he grew up, too. The little orc child pouts, but I don't know where my home is. You ask the old man if he knows anything about the dragon. No, sir, he answers. All I know is that it brings more trouble to this already troubled world. But our headman is a wise and worldly man. He might know something, he remarks, pointing at a house not far away. Ah, so that's what that is. That's the headman. The little goblin sulks. As he gazes upon the withering flowers he tried so desperately to take care of. looks at you with tears in his eyes, silently begging you for help. Well, of course he does. Uh... You pour the salve onto the flowers, and they stand up tall. The goblin cries out in happiness and thanks you for your help. He then holds something out to you. Card number five. Wait, so I've skipped over something. The goblin stares lovingly at the beautiful flowers and gobbles them up. 
Healthy flowers are the tastiest, he proclaims in glee. Did he grow those flowers just to eat them? Weird diet, but okay. A young boy wanders up to your group in wide-eyed wonder. You surmise his curiosity stems from the lack of travelers visiting the village. You realize you are right when he assails you with questions about your origins and adventures. The Inquisition leaves you exhausted. Simple boy. However does your mouth become so filthy, Mr. Flobby? Sighs the girl as she wipes the slime clean. Clearly embarrassed, Mr. Flobby murmurs, that's not my mouth. The little orc child is engrossed in a fairy tale. The title reads, The Legend of the Dragon. Uh, I'd like to sneak a peek. You take a peek into the picture book and come across a passage that piques your interest. Defeated by the king's army, the dragon hid itself away. To where, you wonder? Then recall that this is merely a fairy tale. Nah, motherfucker, this is real life. It's not a fairy tale. The village headman is a renowned gourmet, and rumor has it he only dines on the finest foods. The man says he wishes he too could have such a lavish meal just once in his life. His deep desire for delicacies only growing with time. Wow, a new friend, and so big, too, the furball exclaims in glee as it rushes over to Mar. Mar stares off into the distance as the furball snuggles up to his leg. For some reason, Riddus joins in on the cuddling. Lately, a suspicious man cloaked in black has been seen wandering about the village outskirts. The old woman looks at Melanie and remarks that he was dressed just like her. All right, don't accuse her just because you saw someone that looked a bit weirder than you. Travelers, you hear a voice call from somewhere. Down here. At thy feet, you look down to see a small clump of fur by your boots. The clump of fur speaks. I am Lappy, and I should like to journey forth with thee. What? Lappy the furball looks at you with amiable expectations. What makes you think we'll be your friend? Why do you want to join us? You ask candidly. I heard a voice calling my name, so I must find to whom it belongs, he answers with a faraway gaze. No more monsters, comes Melanie's cold reply. When you say more, do you mean Mar, you ask? But Melanie doesn't answer. Thoroughly rejected by Melanie, Lappy bursts into tears. Lappy says he has no friends because of his aged face and speech. All alone, he decided to leave the village on a journey. Your party is silenced by the crying child with the face of a grown man. You tell Melanie to be nice and quip that both she and Lappy could use a friend. Exhausted from arguing with you, Melanie half-heartedly agrees. Fine, we can be friends. However, she says that they are on a dangerous journey to defeat the dragon. As such, they cannot take a child with them. Lappy leaps up and hugs her in his excitement, exclaiming, Thou hast made me so happy. 
Well named Lappy became friends. Till next time, Melanie says, peeling Lappy off of her and placing him on the ground. Though she thought all monsters to be evil, Melanie feels that the ones here are different. Finally, a friend. That was weird. You bow, but before you can speak, the man suddenly introduces himself as the village headman. He laughs, then shamelessly praises his own village as being wondrous and peaceful. And who are you? He asks. Traveling wanderers. Uh, After we'll be explaining honest. that you are on a quest to defeat the dragon, the headman invites you to rest your feet a bit in his village. He says that he had heard rumors of the dragon when he traveled the world. You must be tired from your journey. Have a seat. I will have my chef prepare a feast, the headman says, then claps his hands twice to summon a stewardess. Damn. Extravagant dishes that you have never seen before are placed on the table before you, each one looking more delicious than the last. You're drooling, Melanie scowls. You hadn't even noticed. You wipe your mouth with your sleeve, then gasp as you turn to Mar. Let me guess, he's a right Perhaps in an attempt to hold himself back, Mar is gnawing on the table corner. Uh. There, there. We'll eat soon, you reassure Mar while gently stroking his head. The doors fly open in the next instant, and a girl runs in. With tears in her eyes, she tells you that her dear companion, Mr. Flobby the Slime, is missing. The headman's eyes go wide in surprise. We must find that slime right away, he says anxiously. You are starving, but it doesn't look like you'll be able to partake of the feast before you because of Mr. Flobby's disappearance. Oh. Fine. We will find your slime, and then we feast. You add quietly. Melanie reminds you that you are here to get clues about the dragon from the headman. What's the difference? Literally everything. Hunger taking its toll, you two begin to argue. Brave heroes, the headman interjects, then bows his head. Would you please find her slime? It appears the story has hit a standstill until you find the missing Mr. Flobby. You need to hear the whole story from the young girl. No more story until you find the slime. Find out what Mr. Flobby's friend has to say. The girl sobs, wailing about the missing Mr. Flobby. Melanie places her hand atop the girl's head and promises that your party will find her companion. The girl then hands something to Melanie. It looks like the muddy handkerchief she used to wipe Mr. Flobby. She asks Melanie to wipe Mr. Flobby with it after you find him. All right, we got the girl claims through. to have searched the village, but cannot find her friend anywhere. Regardless, 
Looking aimlessly outside the village would be a waste of time. You decide to collect more information in the village. Ask the good people of Unionville for hints as to Mr. Flobby's whereabouts. Mm, nothing. The goblin dutifully tends his flower bed, eagerly anticipating the day they bloom. It seems like the girl who left the headman's house ran away in tears. The elderly man says she cannot have gone far. Melanie's friend Lappy is here. Lappy cuddles up to Melanie. Despite her hatred of monsters, Melanie doesn't seem to mind. Having no interest in children's picture books, you continue on your way. She says she saw a suspicious man in black with a slime outside the village not long ago. She claimed they went northwest together. Did that man take Mr. Flobby? You resolved to leave the village in search of the pair. items no oh no west okay about the enemy Which is not strictly necessary, it would certainly help you find your way through the dimly lit shrine. Check the name of the shrine for any sign of Mr. Flobby. I mean, I have a torch.
your footing is obscured in the dimness of the shrine. You should probably proceed with caution. You go forth slowly but steadily, taking it one step at a time. You take a good look at the floor and see it lined in trails of viscous liquid. No doubt a slime or two hundred have passed through here. Oh, I realized what I was also going to do, too. Looks like poor Mr. Flobby is being held captive by the Mystery Man. Mystery Hand over man. that slime, you shout to the man in the dark. You speak as if I kidnapped him, he remarks, curtly turning to face you. Uh, Melanie, is that your brother? When your eyes finally adjust to the surrounding darkness, you realize the man's clothes look eerily similar to Melanie's. Melanie's mouth falls open in surprise. It seems the man has noticed Melanie as well. It looks like the two know each other. What do I suppose their relationship are? I mean, they're wa wa wearing matching outfits. The man says that he and Melanie came from the same village, where this was their native dress. The man's revelation makes you realize that you know almost nothing about Melanie's past. Take your chance to find out more. Melanie's hometown. You ask Melanie about her hometown, but she holds her tongue. Then the man speaks. With forbidden magic, our clan has ensured the dragon he begins when Melanie cuts in. She rattles on about the man, telling you that he is Vince, a lunatic obsessed with the dragon. Oh. Vince resentfully claims that he is searching for the noble dragon to protect it. You ran away from home with your tail between your legs, he ridicules. Enraged, Melanie lunges at Vince. You have so many questions, but realize that the most pressing matter is getting Mr. Flobby back. So you're ready for battle. Careful, he won't go down easy. Oh, a hundred HP. Hit. 
Okay, he resists ice. During the fight, Vince asks, Do you know the truth about that village? The headman may look like a nice old man, but he keeps those little monsters around too. He begins, but before he can finish... Winifred, Hedwin, and Berwin of the Ivory Order appear. What the fuck? The three brush you aside, fixing their attention on Vince. So you are the one who disturbs the peace, they exclaim, then charge at him. Hey, motherfuckers, this was my fight. The Ivory Order and that false justice they serve are the true evil here. He retaliates, fighting back. Vince looks like he wants to say something. Heroic hunts gain immunity to paralysis. Shockwave. Deal bolt damage. Inflict a par paralysis if the roll is four or greater. Ooh. Seeing the two parties occupied with each other, you realize this is your chance to grab Mr. Flobby. Man, fuck Mr. Flobby. I want the answers. Vince is on equal footing with the three from the Order. You realize then that he wasn't fighting in earnest against you earlier. Engrossed in their battle, the combatants pay you no mind. That's not fair. Perhaps wary of humans, Mr. Flobby dashes out when you draw near. out to grab Mr. Flobby, he suddenly attacks. Motherfucker, don't make me pop Lower you. Mr. Flobby's stamina to calm him down. Why does he have so much? You know what? Screw it. Oh, I one-shot him. Exhausted from the fight, the raging Mr. Flobby finally stops attacking. But it seems he hasn't yet come to his senses. He glares warily at your party. Find something to help return Mr. Flobby to normal. Ah, uh, the handkerchief. You wipe Mr. Flobby's mouth with the handkerchief you received from the girl. Then you hear a quiet voice speak. That's not my mouth, Mr. Flobby murmurs bashfully. It looks like the girl's familiar scent on the handkerchief returned him to normal. Having regained his senses, Mr. Flobby heads back to the village. You place the increasingly sticky handkerchief in your bag. <laughs> 
Lappy approaches and tells you that Mr. Flobby has returned. Talk with Mr. Flobby now that he is safely within the confines of Unionville. Okay. The girl is ecstatic that Mr. Flobby is finally back home. I'm happy for you, Melanie says with a smile as she returns the handkerchief. The girl bows her head and thanks you deeply. Mr. Flobby looks as slimy as ever. You just hope it's a happy slime. The headman wants us to bring Mr. Flobby to him. Would you mind, you ask? Of course not, but bring him back soon, she answers with a bright smile. Happy to see you safe and sound, the headman exclaims, giving Mr. Flobby a hug. You explain everything that happened, including the incident with Vince and the Ivory Order. He expresses his relief that the Order will be taking care of the criminal. He then thanks you for your hard work and instructs his stewardess to prepare dinner for your party. You can feel your collective mouths watering at the sight of the lavish meal before you. I mean, dig in before Mark you, eats it all. Mar and Riddus immediately dig in. You aren't sure where you find a moment to breathe among all the feasting. Please, eat to your heart's content, the headman insists with a smile. Once your belly is full, you realize that Mr. Flobby is gone. And then... Room for dessert? The headman asks, offering you a plate of slimy jelly. You feel your stomach churning at the very sight of it. No. The color strikes you as familiar, and the stickiness sends a shiver down your spine. You're kidding. Is... is this... Mr. Flobby? You ask the headman, your voice trembling in disbelief. The headman looks at you with a plain expression, one that holds no malice. Is that a problem? He questions back. This dish is a masterpiece, he remarks with a light-hearted chuckle as he gazes at the jelly. And I have you brave heroes to thank for it. Had you not brought that slime back, <laughs> we would not be able to enjoy this exquisite dessert. Wow. Take your leave of Unionville. Yeah, fuck this place. Are you full? He asks, seemingly concerned at your silence. It would be a shame to let something so splendid go to waste. So the people here eat monsters. You move to leave, but the headman stops you. I try to get my meat while it's still young and tender, but at least your pet is very plump, he remarks, licking his lips. He points at Mar and asks, would you consider leaving that creature here with me? Uh, go fuck yourself? Is that an answer? Never, you refuse flatly, not bothering to hide your discomfort. Think about it, he entreats. And then... He grabbed the headman by his lapels, hands trembling in fury. Oh, it's just me. 
Oh. Uh, I guess I'll just cut him down. the headman with all your might curled up on the ground the headman groans in pain but insists that monsters were meant to be eaten you hug mar tightly reassuring him that you will not hand him over to anyone mar looks at you with his round eyes and mews softly you meet eyes with the rest of your party and reach a tacit agreement together you all stand and leave. Uh, yeah, let's leave. As you are about to leave the headman's house, though, the old man suddenly charges at you from behind. But Mar, the keener of you two, is quick to block his path. With a crash, Mar and the headman tumble to the ground. From the headman's hand falls a small blade. It clatters to the ground, covered in blood. Did you just stab Mar? You take the injured Mar to an inn where you can watch over him. You gaze at the unconscious Mar with concern. Despite the shallow wound, no amount of medicine seems to rouse Mar from the bed. I heard that my friends were in danger, so I came as quickly as I could, Lappy says. As he reaches Mar's bedside, he leans over and licks his wound. This is what you call it, extract, he shouts. What you call it? He explains that it is a poison extracted from a certain monster. If it enters the body, it drastically reduces one's stamina. Hearing those words, you realize the headman's blade must have been coated in this poison. Mars' condition starts to make sense. Isn't there anything we can do, Melanie asks. Lappy's eyes widen in realization before he places his mouth over Mars' wound and begins sucking. He then puts the what-you-call-it extract into a bottle and hands it to you. What-you-call-it? Lappy says that if you follow the road south of the village, you will reach Shoreland. He tells you to give the extract to the famous nutritionist there. Lappy should go. Realizing that you are at fault for this, you don't hesitate to undertake the quest. But this is strange. The extract comes from a monster, so it should have no effect on one, Lappy remarks with a curious tilt of his head. Mar was removed from the party. Oh, well shit. Follow the road leading south from Unionville towards Shoreland. He urges you to hurry on to Shoreland and find the nutritionist. I thought a beast of that size would eat us out of house and home. She remarks, no doubt talking about Mar.
Wait, he's back? The girl sighs. You're dirty again, she says, wiping a slime's mouth. Mr. Flobby, you're alive, you exclaim in glee. This is Mr. Globby, Mr. Flobby's cousin, she tells you. Ooh. The girl sighs. You're dirty again, she says, wiping Mr. Flobby's cousin, Mr. Globby. I want to see if this fucker's still here. Thank God, Mr. Fl okay, he's not. Yeah, thank God, Mr. Uh, Flobby's still alive. Ha 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 ha. Chapter 4, Shoreland. Well, the next objective is to head to Shoreland. Uh, that will be on the next time that we pick this up. Uh, realizing what time it is now. And I have work in the morning. So, uh... Thanks for tuning in. I've been Lex. Um, and yeah, I guess we will see what happens in the next chapter of this. It doesn't seem like... I want to just look real quick. Just looking from the movies, it looks like there's only seven chapters in this game. So it doesn't seem like it's particularly that long. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Also, I should say before I do anything, because I haven't done that since pretty much the beginning of the chapter. Alright, cool. Alright, I've been Lex. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.